Hello, Jermaine here, and in this video, we're going to be looking at the Toaster JS notifications um, plugin um, for jQuery, and uh, we're going to be looking at how to integrate that into a Dart application. So um, this is what we're going to be building today. So here I've got this example app generated using the Stagehand package. So this is an actual Angular Dart application, and essentially it's a it's a to-do list. Um, you add a to-do here, and you click the plus icon, or you um, um, hit enter and it'll add it to this list. So this is how we've integrate, I've integrated um, this toaster JS notifications library. So if we add another item in the list, it shows the notification at the bottom right saying added what the item is. So let's try that again. So let's say by bread, you see here it says added by bread. And we can mark an item as complete. When we mark an item as complete, we see a notification saying, well done, marked by bread as complete. We can delete an item. So if I delete buy milk, it says deleted, removed by milk. And of course, if I attempt to add any duplicates, like let's say grab lunch, it shows a red notification saying cannot enter duplicate task. So in this video, I'll show you how we integrate Toaster um, in an Angular Dart application. Okay, so for our first step, we need to generate an Angular Dart application. And the way we'll do that is um, if you've got the Dart extension installed for VS Code, um, you can open up the command palette and essentially select Dart New Project. And what it does is it will fetch all stagehand templates and uh, you just want to select the first option, which is an Angular Dart web app. And then we'll give you a name, so we'll call it Toaster. And then we need to find a folder to bootstrap our Toaster project. And once we found our folder, we just select a folder. And what it's going to do is going to generate a subfolder with the, the name of our project. And then it will generate the files in the folders we need. Okay, and secondly, what we need to do is to add the JS package uh, to our list of dependencies in the pubspec.yaml file. So um, it's just saying JS and we want not dot six dot one plus one. And once we save, the extension would automatically um, install our packages, update our dependencies. If you do not have the Dart extension installed, you can run pubget in your terminal and it would you essentially do the same thing. Once your packages are updated, you just need to confirm that everything runs smoothly. And what we'll do is run web dev serve and I'll enable live reloading. And once the project is successfully built, um, we'll have our server at locals 8080. So just need to visit that in the browser. And, and then that should load our app. So we should be able to add items our app, check items as complete, remove items from our list, and then it'll revert to that, nothing to do. So before we incorporate um, Toaster, um, I'd like to talk you briefly through the Angular Dart project. Of course, this is not an Angular Dart tutorial. Um, I'll do a better tutorial series on that in a future uh, video. But essentially, in our main.dart is where our Angular Dart app gets bootstrapped and is bootstrapped using a top level function called run app, which is in the Angular package. And then um, essentially we pass in a component ng factory, which it comes uh, from app component template, which is in our lib folder. So in our lib folder, we have um, this app component, which is essentially the root component that our um, Angular Dart application would sit in. So what you find that most of, um, well, most of the components we'll be writing in Angular are usually just normal Dart classes that have been annotated with the component um, annotation, um, which this is from um, the Angular um, Dart package, of course. Um, so in this uh, root component, we've just got our app component and uh, of course we've got a HTML file um, with our template and then we've got some normal CSS. We're not going to really touch these two because um, 
if we look in the source folder this is the logic for our to-do list and then if we look at this now um, this contains the logic for our to-do list component so it handles when we add items when we remove items and so on and so forth um, and of course this is a normal dart class that we've annotated using the component annotation we're using a to-do list service and the way that works is that's also another class in that that has been annotated using the injectable um, annotation so if we come back here the way that works is um, with angular dart um, whenever you wish to use a service you need to annotate it first with the injectable annotation and then in your component what we do is we inject it we pass it in as a provider so which means that um, in our constructor function now we can do this dot um, to do list service here which um, we've essentially bound to this type to do list service so um, behind the scenes angular dart is able to do the wiring up for us essentially okay i hope that made sense but if not um, i'll release a an angular dart video series um, explaining it better so let's get into this in order to um, actually start using toaster we need to grab our toaster uh, dependencies essentially so um, i'll do that by going to cdnjs.com and searching for toaster and then i'm gonna copy the script tag and then i'm gonna go to index.html in the web directory and then i'll place that here just before our main.dart.js script declaration and also what we need from there is not just the javascript file we also need the minified css so i'm going to copy the link tag then i'll place it uh, in this file and of course jquery is required so we need to grab jquery so if we go back and then we search for jquery um, i can just grab this one copy the script tag for that one and then um, and then place it here right before toaster okay so i'll save this file and we can confirm we have toaster running if i do toaster dot let's say Ashan info box and then there we go we have it at the top here okay so we've got our toaster notifications running and now what we need to do is to actually interrupt with it okay so in the lib source directory i'm going to create a new folder i'll call it interrupt and this in this folder i'll create a dart file called toaster interrupt actually i'll just call it toaster.dart okay so first steps for interrupt is we need to declare a js annotation and then uh, give this file a library name toaster interrupt and then uh, just make sure to import our js package and then hook into our toaster namespace so we do that using the external keyword we declare getter called toaster and of course we need to tell dart about the structure of toaster so i will create an interface called toaster interface and then what i'll do is i'll create this interface and in here we need to declare um, essentially the methods we want so let's um, start by trying to invoke the info method the way we do that is we'll create an external um, getter for info info and of course the type of this is function which takes in a string containing our message and now we'll try to invoke this by coming to our to-do list component and then on initialization well before we do that we need to import it first so let's import package the package name is based on the name we specified in our pathspec.yaml file the package is based on this um, name value here 
So package name toaster, which brings us to the lib folder. And then um, we can do source, interrupt, and then toaster dot dot. And then once we've done that, now we can use our toaster notification. So we'll do toaster dot info. And then we'll say running. So let's test this out. And there we go. Before we resume, let's take a look at the documentation to understand um, the toaster uh, method um, signatures that we want. So looking at these examples here, it takes in, so it takes in a message and then it takes in a title. Uh, afterwards, um, of course, the title is optional because in some of the invocations, um, no titles are specified. And then it takes in a third um, argument, which is an options object. So let's see how we can um, define those. So if I come back to our interrupt file, um, we'll take in our second parameter, which um, these are optional. So we'll use the square brackets for optional positional parameters and then so it will be string title and the third one is um, a dynamic type uh, containing our options and of course we need to replicate this for success error and warning just to make things look cleaner I'm going to make this part of a um, type definition so I make a type def and then the name of our type def would be, I'll just call it um, toaster notification function. And then um, it will be set to a function with these parameters. Okay, so I'll just copy this and then I'll set it as this type. So this looks, um, yeah, slightly cleaner. Uh, so we need for info. Um, we need for success uh, we need for error and then we need for warning in fact let's do it for these two as well so for those will be just external function get remove and then um, clear so now let's go back to our to-do list component and then in our component, I remove this and for our add method, I'm going to show a notification. So toaster.info and I'll say added new to do. Let's test this out. So I'm going to add to do and we should see a notification pop up perfect added grab lunch okay so we got that working and let's do let's do one for remove so i'm gonna convert this to that and then items remove at index so what i'm gonna do is to create a variable called um, removed to do it will be set to this because um, items that remove at it re not only removes the object but it returns the removed object so i'm going to do this instead and it will assign it to removed to do and once it's removed we can do toaster dot warning and i'll say deleted removed to do and I'll say removed item for my title. So let's save this and test it out. Of course, I'll mark this as void because it's not returning a string anymore. Okay. So let's try this. Added. And then when I click, there we go. Removed item. Deleted. Finished video tutorial. 
Okay, let's remove pre-existing notifications by calling the clear method before we show our um, deleted message. And let's test it out. So grab lunch. And then when I delete it, it should animate out straight away. And in fact, if we want to disable animation, we'll use the remove method instead. And we'll give that a go. Yep, there we go, looks better. I think, anyway. Next thing we need to do is to display a message once an item is marked as complete, we should show a success message at the top. And in order to do that, we need to take a look at the template file component. So in Angular Dart, you de define template either as a string or with the template URL, um, um, the template URL identifier in here. So, which points to this template here. So if we take a look at this template uh, for, yeah, for each of our to-do items, there is a material component checkbox. And in there, this essentially um, is a reference to the um, DOM um, element that this component is wrapping. So this is a reference essentially to the input, the actual input um, checkbox, which is why when we tick this, um, we're able to um, add this class of done, which is because we look at our reference, our DOM reference done, and then um, um, see whether it's checked or not. So essentially this class is added because this expression is evaluated which, um, yeah, um, check to be set to true when we click this checkbox. Okay, so what we need to do here is to add a click event here. And then in here we'll um, call a function that we'll define called toggle checkbox, checkbox like this. And then we need to define um, this method in our component. So if I come back here, I'll define it here called toggle checkbox. And then what we do is um, we we'll say toaster success and uh, marked task as complete. And then I have a title, well done. Let's save all, both files and try it. Okay. Add a task and then we'll toggle it as complete. And there we go. Well done, marked task is complete. But now here's the interesting part. Um, we need a reference to this text itself because I want it to say marked then the name of the task as complete. So the way we'll do that is um, if we come back to our template, notice that in our, in our loop, we're essentially assigning i, which is the index. We're assigning the index, which is the index of each item to a local variable called i. So, which means that in our toggle checkbox method, we can pass in i. So that's the first step. And then the second step will be in our component. Uh, we'll capture this i, which is our index. And then um, grab the toggle to do. And then essentially we'll grab the index from our items array, which stores our list of to do's. So which means that in here now I can do marked 
toggled to do as complete. And let's put that in double quotes. Let's save this and try it. Okay. So let's add a task, grab lunch. I did grab lunch and then I click that and there we go. Well done, marked grab lunch as complete. Okay, what happens when we un untick it? Yeah, that shouldn't be happening because we've unticked it. We didn't mark it as complete. So what we need to do essentially is we need a way of grabbing the state of our um, toggled tasks so that we could do something along the lines of if say if toggle to do um, is marked as done and then we can we can show the success message but at the moment we can't do that because the items are all strings so essentially um, what I'm getting at is we need to um, create a model um, that represents each of our tasks so I will um, let's disable this for now and then what we're going to do is we'll come back to our to-do list service in here and what essentially I'll, I'll do um, is I'll create my model here I could create in a different file um, but for the purpose of this tutorial I'll just create it here and then we'll have our to-do model and um, which takes in a our to-do text and a property called a boolean called done and then we need to um, declare our instance properties text and then done so whatever gets passed in here will be assigned to these two okay and then the next thing i'll do is we'll make this a list of to-do types and we'll fix that here which means that we need to fix it in several other places so i'll come back to our component and then uh, we'll mark it as a list of to-dos okay and essentially we want to add a new to do object and then done will be set to false but i will come back i'll go back to the service and for done let's make this optional and then by default it will be set to false so then that means i don't have to put false because it's set to false by default Okay, I'll save both files. Um, now actually, before I save both files, we need to make corrections here in our component. Um, so item is now a um, to-do type, essentially. So what we want to do here is we want to grab the text from the item. And then here would be item dot done yeah i think that should be it as far as this part is concerned and then uh, i think i can come back here let's take a look yeah that should be good so let's save all of this and try it and see okay buy milk added buy milk okay deleted okay so it's deleted instance of to do that's not what we want so um, if i come to my remove method we want the text to be deleted and also for our toggle checkbox now we can just we can re-enable this since um the toggle to do is um our to do model so let's save this and try it. Okay. Grab lunch. Added grab lunch. So let's remove the item, delete it, grab lunch. Um, let's try again. Added grab lunch. 
Okay, nothing happens when we toggle it. Okay, let's see what we did here. So we need to bind essentially um, the checked value of that. So we're using two-way um, two-way binding, um, two-way data binding by using the curved bracket in the box bracket. Or I think the term is called um, banana in a box essentially. But we need to bind the checked property of our checkbox to our done instance property on our item type and our to do type. So let's save this and um, try again. So if I say grab lunch, add a grab lunch, take that. Yeah, there we go. Well done, marked instance of to do. Okay, so let's fix this. Come to our component and we just want the text for that. Let's try this again. Added, finished video tutorial. Well done, marked. Finished video tutorial as complete. And once I untick it, it won't happen again. It doesn't show again. Okay. So the next thing we now need to do is to prevent duplicates from being added because at the moment if I do finish video tutorial again it adds a second one and these are all duplicates. So what we'll do is in our add method we first need to check if our items dot index where we check if the to do's text is the same as our new to do so if any of these exist it will return a number greater than one but if none of these exist um, they return minus one so essentially if it's greater than minus one that means it's a duplicate Therefore, what we're going to do is to show the error. Um, task already exists. Duplicate. And I'm just going to return from here. So let's, let's try this. So if I enter grab lunch and I try to enter grab lunch again it says duplicate task already exists but this is imperfect because if this L is a capital L it will still add it although it's essentially the same so what we're going to do is convert these to to lower case and make the comparison and then also I'll call the trim function which removes any um, spaces before or afterwards so it returns the string without any leading and trailing white space so I'll save this and I will we'll try that again so I'll enter grab lunch then grab lunch A duplicate um, if I make the H a capital shows duplicate okay that's good if I enter spaces afterwards duplicate spaces before duplicate perfect okay so I just do grab dinner then that's fine okay that looks good um, I may need to do a bit more clearing so I'll call the toaster dot clear function um, I'll also invoke the same method here 
So let's try this one more time. Enter a couple of tasks. Grab lunch. Add a grab lunch. Finish video tutorial. Add a finish video tutorial. I marked grab lunch as complete. When I untick it, it just ignores it. And then um, once I delete, it says removed item, deleted grab lunch. If I try to enter a duplicate, it says task already exists. Okay, so that's good. And also what we can do is we can initialize um, this service, our to-do list service, essentially with a list of to-dos. So we can come back here and it's just as simple as to do grab lunch to do prep for Bible studies and then to do finish video tutorial. So if I save this page loads, we should see these tasks preloaded in here and there we have it so of course I can take each of these as complete and be able to delete each of these and that's it I realized in retrospect that I forgot something which is if we go to the toaster example here on GitHub, um, we need to be able to pass in an options object um, as the third parameter uh, with a list of options essentially. So what I'm gonna do is um, show you how we do that using this interrupt solution. So the third our third parameter I marked as dynamic, but essentially I would, um, in fact, I may, yeah, in fact, I'll, I'll leave it as such. But the way we pass in our options here, um, it's not by passing in a map because dark maps do not translate um, to the same as JavaScript um, objects. So what we'll do is we need to first import a library called JSUtil, which has got a couple of um, functions that we'll need. So we need to create a um, a function that would convert a dart map to a JavaScript object, which is what we're going to do um, now. So um, the return type will be of type object. And then we'll say, we'll call our function map to JS object that way. And then um, this will take in a dart map. So the map will be string for keys and then the values will be dynamic. And then uh, we'll call our parameter dart map. So in here, um, we'll create our JS object and then we'll call our, our function new object, um, which is from the JS util package. And then what we'll do is we'll loop over um, our key value pairs in our dart map. So um, we'll not use for, we'll use for each. So for each key value pair, so we'll call the name value. What we're going to do is we are going to call another top level function in the jsutil.dart file called set property and then set property um, takes in an object our javascript object and then um, the name of the property we want to set and the value that way once we're done we'll return our js object 
So just to recap, we create a new JS object, which this essentially is a an actual JavaScript object. And then for each of our key value pairs of our Dart map, essentially we're taking out the names and values and we're passing it to our JS object. And then um, once we've created those in our JS object, we return our JS object back. So this now means that we're able to um, do something along the lines of this. So if I come back to our component, uh, to do list component dart file, um, just to test this out, let's do um, for okay for a deleted item. We'll, call, well, we need to invoke our function. So map to JS object, which takes in a dart map. And then what option can we use? Uh, we'll use the, I think there's an option called position class. Okay, we'll just use a timeout as an example. So let's set the timeout to, let's say 500 milliseconds. So if I click delete, it should disappear after 500 milliseconds. Yep, that seems to be working. Um, there's another option um, Toaster uses, I believe it's called uh, position class. And then uh, we can position it on various uh, parts of the screen. So it will be toast, um, let's say top left. So if I save this, and then I delete our notification. So it appear at the top left. Okay, so that seems to be working. And of course, if I do bottom left, Our notifications will now appear at the bottom left. This now brings me to the end of the tutorial. Don't forget to read, follow and subscribe if you enjoyed the content being presented here. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already and click the notification icon next to the subscribe button because nowadays um, clicking subscribe just isn't enough. So click the notification icon so that you get updated when new videos are released. Also like this video and of course if you've got any questions do let me know in the comments below. I'm always open to questions that um, developers have um, especially when working with that so if you've got any questions let me know below if you haven't subscribed click subscribe if you haven't visited my website visit my website at creativebracket.com thank you